India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates. And the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. Trade precious metals, currencies and energy futures in the first and largest derivatives exchange in the region. Trade the unique Indian rupee futures contract and hedge your price risk. Trade gold futures on a regulated and secure platform. Regulated by Securities and Commodities Authority in the UAE. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Liquid markets and tight spreads. Superior transaction speed. Wider range of trading and clearing services. Emerging market access for the global market. Global market access. Access for regional investors. DGCX, right time, right place. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates. And the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. your money for incredible investment opportunities talk to SMC money wise be wise India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs your support inspires us to do better don't miss out on the opportunity contact yes bank today My name is Pallavi. Welcome to the second edition of the Indian Budget Middle East Impact. I would like to invite Mr. Naveen Chandra, the Head of International Business for Times Television Network, to open the session tonight. His Excellency, Consul General of India, uh, Mr. Sanjay Verma, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second year of the India budget Middle East impact. And I must tell you, I'm not qualified to comment on the fiscal deficit, but we've had a major deficit of chairs here. The hall is packed to the brim compared to last year. And I thank all of you to have joined this discussion. And I hope that all of you enjoy the evening. Times now is part of the Times group, as you all know. The Times group is India's largest diversified media conglomerate with interests in uh, radio, television, print, uh, mobile, VAS, movies, events uh, across the media continuum. We print uh, the world's largest English language daily called the Times of India, as you all know. We have a clutch of brands that spread from uh, various parts of the media continuum. In each of these brands are leaders in their domain uh, respectively. Times Television Network has been uh, a very urban, differentiated and focused number one uh, set of number one television channel brands in India. We have four of these. Times Now is uh, India's leading English news channel with very differentiated uh, and focused content. Zoom is India's biggest Bollywood channel. ET Now is uh, India's biggest business news channel. And Movies Now is India's biggest Hollywood HD English movie channel. Each of these products uh, have, have become number one because of the unique quality of programming and continue to invest in growing themselves in various markets. And at this stage, I would like to invite uh, His Excellency, Consul General of India, uh, Mr. Sanjay Verma, to open the session today. 
Thank you so much. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, distinguished uh, members of the three panels which, are, which have been put up for this uh, lovely evening of uh, interaction, debate, discussion on the budget. Uh, senior members of the Indian community, friends, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, Namaskar, Salaam Alaikum and a very, very good evening. Your understanding of India is only the cities, only the affluence and the, but a lot of India is still in the villages. There are uh, great uh, uh, economic divides, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, poverty in certain sectors, certain communities aren't doing as well as the others, certain sectors of the economy aren't, health, education. So government has to play a corrective uh, role, what you call inclusive growth. So the budget comes in there, it can kick in uh, you know, a few measures, uh, dole out money or allocate money to certain sectors of the economy, tax the rich. The fact that a figure like 42,800 sticks out in the budget tells us that we need to do a lot more so that the rich pay more uh, as taxation. And why shouldn't they? I mean, uh, we talk about the Azmi, uh, Premji's Azmi spirit of giving. That is not happening in India. So while that doesn't happen, taxes will happen. That is one way of looking at it. What I would like to share with you is the general trends in uh, the budget since the liberalization process in 91. The, the fact is that the GDP is actually the biggest driver of tax revenue. Whenever GDP has grown, tax revenues have grown. For example, uh, the tax collection uh, in the year 2004-2005 was about 2 lakh crores. But because of the fantastic growth of 7, 8, 9% in the last 3, 4 years, that became 10 lakh crores in, financial, in the last financial year because GDP grew, grew, grew to such an extent. Lower tax rates have meant higher revenue. The tax base change has happened in this liberalization period. The direct taxes which were about 22% in 91 are today 56% in, in the sense that indirect taxes are now less than direct taxes. So the rich are paying more rather than the poor. I thank uh, the organizers and Times Now and uh, uh, ET and Zoom for inviting me for this occasion. I wish all of you a very happy uh, evening, a good, uh, fruitful uh, discussion, debates, and uh, feel free. And I'm sure we'll pick up a few pointers for our finance minister from here. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency, Mr. Sanjay Varma. I would now like to invite Dr. Shubhadha Rao, the Senior President and Chief Economist of Yes Bank, to give the keynote address for the Indian Budget 2000 East, the Middle East Impact. On behalf of Yes Bank and Mr. Rana Kapoor, uh, welcome all of you on this important day when we are going to des uh, decisively analyze the budget and give a verdict perhaps at the end of the day, good, bad or ugly. I hope good. That's what the tone I would like to set for the budget. Uh, yes, Bank, as you all know, is the youngest commercial bank in India, now eight years old. And we have been growing over the last, many, all the years, about 30 to 35 percent. A balance sheet size of close to about 88,000 crores. We have a 412 branches in India, aspiring to nearly double that uh, in, by 2015. Uh, yes, we do not have a branch presence yet in the region here. We wait for a regulatory approval, but back home, uh, we are considered to be one of the dynamic banks, the youngest bank with young people, average age being just about 29 years, and that is the kind of energy and passion that we like to work with. And uh, without much ado, there's a lot to discuss. The reappointed finance minister's budgetary preparation, if I may say so, started in September 2012, when he began to address the twin deficit concerns, that of subsidies, that of attracting foreign direct investment, and more importantly, beginning to address the 
the one key single concern on current account gap, which was gold. He began to raise import duties on gold. So quite clearly, the concerns were very important for him to begin addressing. Over the last few months, as you all notice, he has been progressively addressing those. And the key measure that he took was uh, raising the diesel prices, a hugely political sensitive issue, and more importantly, he did not, did not roll back. I think that goes to add to the testimony of the seriousness of his preparation for the budget. Uh, so quite clearly, um, no miracles, but what he has done is small, very meaningful steps. To start off with, since we are here in Dubai this evening, I thought you know, we could start off very quickly uh, you know, highlighting how the trade and investment relations with the region have evolved over the years. Quite clearly over the two decades, if you look at the trade numbers, uh, please bear me out because I think it's like telling all of you what you do. So, but for the propriety, I would like to take it sequentially. So from $2 billion to taking it to $72 billion, that's, that's the kind of a scaling up we have done in trade. Obviously, uh, the negotiations have been ongoing. We have had 17 bilateral uh, agreements that we have seen uh, over the many years. Uh, obvious uh, uh, trading commodities are petroleum products, gems, jewelry, textiles, and so on. It's a two-way traffic. India, by the way, is UAE, uh, uh, largest trading partner for India is UAE. That's how important the region has become for India. I think the finance minister has delivered a very no-nonsense, meaningful, incisive budget, which to my mind will have a lot of positive bearing in restoring India's macroeconomic balances towards positive, begin to address inflation, begin to kickstart growth, look at financial savings to get encouraged, and most important, look at current account gap narrowing. Thank you. We are very positive about Dubai particularly, and Middle East is a very good, great country, and we are very positive about it. How does it really connect with you as an investor? The fact that he's brought it down to 5.2% and he's hoping to bring it down further to 4.8%. If you as an investor want to put your money in India, does it make for a better case of investment? India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates. And the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Well, moving on, the budget big picture. I would like to invite Ms. Paramita Chatterjee. Senior Editor and Analyst, ET Now. I would also like to invite Mr. S.C. Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director, SMC Group, 
Co-Chairman, Asocham Capital Market Committee, Mr. Agarwal. I would also like to invite Dr. Bharat Bhutani, President, India Business Promotion Council, Dubai. So let's start off this discussion this evening by getting two sides of the story. Mr. Agarwal here is going to give you the inside story. How are we within India perceiving the budget? A lot of analysis, but we are all, we, you could say we are a bit of frog in the well syndrome because we are all analyzing within ourselves, within the country that listen, this is how we perceive, this is how the impact is going to be. But actually the perception outside the country could be very different and that's been the learning. So Mr. Butani here is going to try and give us that aspect. So that's the first part of this discussion. So let me start off with both of you gentlemen. And this is a bit like during the college festivals, you know, you had both sides of the story. So we'll try and make it as exciting as possible. But the big question here, Mr. Agarwal, let me start with you. Has Mr. Chidambaram been able to do that? Uh, thank you, Primuta, uh, to invite me. You see, a lot of expectation was there from the finance minister when he was to present this budget on 28 February 2013. Uh, since he has done many reforms earlier, uh, FDI in detail, and so many things were expecting from him. And the challenge was, uh, this was his last and our first budget as a UPA2 government, and uh, uh, election is to be held after that. So it was his last opportunity. He has to keep in his mind balancing the various expenditure he has to... So were you satisfied? Sorry to cut you in. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you satisfied? Yeah, we are satisfied giving the present circumstances. He has done the wonderful job. Hmm. He has been able to contain the fiscal deficit to 5.2% uh, as against the budget 5.3%, whereas in the last year it was 5.7% and nobody was predicting less than 6%. Everybody was thinking it will close 6%. So it was a go good job. Credit rating agencies were right. behind him observing his budget. So he has done a balanced job. Okay. So you give him, you would say he has passed. Yes. He has passed more than 5 out of 10 uh, on this budget. Mr. Bhutani, how, what was your perception of this budget? Did he deliver on the expectations which were building up? Thank you, Paramita, for inviting me on the panel and about the budget, yes, I think he did deliver. Uh, he's a veteran of eight budgets, I, I think, if I'm not wrong. And he's a CEO, basically, by his profession. He's been managing a company. So he would manage the company in the Indian budget or the company budget, which would be excellent. He's done a great job. And, uh, of course, we have a change of FM. The previous, as uh, Mr. Agarwal said, it, it was... Uh, the target last year was set at 5.3 and we have gone down to 5.2 and probably might, when the figures finally come, it might further go down. So it's, it's good. Yeah. And I think the fiscal deficit, possibly even a six-year-old now knows about the fiscal deficit because we've been talking about it for a long time and it's unlikely to go away. But the fact of the matter is, how does it really connect with you as an investor? The fact that he's brought it down to 5.2% and he's hoping to bring it down further to 4.8%. If you as an investor want to put your money in India, does it make for a better case of investment? To answer those questions and more, let me ask the rest of the panelists to join us uh, on stage. And uh, may I begin with uh, Shubhada Rao, of course, who joins us uh, on stage. Mr. S.C. Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director of the SMC Group, Co-Chairman. Mr. Bharat Bhutani, who is of course right here with us. Mr. Goran Desai, who is the Chief Operating Officer of the Dubai Gold Commodity Exchange. Mr. Pramod Manghat of the UAE Exchange. And Mr. Gaurav Ghosh, Financial Features Editor at Gulf News. Together they do only about 9 to 10 billion dollars worth of business. Whereas in uh, DGCX in Dubai, we do at the same time about 3 billion dollars worth of business. We have a very deep uh, network of uh, branches in UAE. 
we have uh, 125 branches in UAE which, uh, which spread across the country where the customers can come in and do the transactions. And also we have the best of the class products available. For, insta for, for example, a product called Flash Remit which uh, instantly credit account to any banks in India. Uh, even on a Sunday evening 8 p.m. you walk into our branch, uh, your account gets credited uh, same day in any of the banks. We work with almost all the banks. So as UAE Exchange, you know, we have grown uh, from a brand of UAE to almost 30 countries with uh, 700 branches. In this environment where it's difficult to trust, especially given this government's past track record of slippages, can we actually trust that figure of A, 5.2% is uh, going to be achieved, but 4.8% next year. Can we actually believe in those numbers? That was a question many of us had to ask. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. Trade precious metals, currencies and energy futures in the first and largest derivatives exchange in the region. Trade the unique Indian rupee futures contract and hedge your price risk. Trade gold futures on a regulated and secure platform. Regulated by Securities and Commodities Authority in the UAE. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Liquid markets and tight spreads. Superior transaction speed. Wider range of trading and clearing services. Emerging market access for the global market. Global market access access for regional investors. DGCX, right time, right place. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Ladies and gentlemen, many thanks for joining us for this discussion. Now this part of the story, as we said, is going to focus on the big picture. Shubhadra just told us about the fiscal deficit and how it works. And, but the key question that Shubhadra, we all came out of this budget and which everybody wanted to know is in this environment where it's difficult to trust, especially given this government's past track record of slippages, can we actually trust that figure of A, 5.2% is uh, going to be achieved, but 4.8% next year. Can we actually believe in those numbers? That was a question many of us had to ask. Uh, Paramika, I think for this, uh, you have to see the credibility of this finance minister. Since right since September, the difficult measures that he's been announcing, mind you, there hasn't been a single major rollback. I say major because for LPG cylinders, you had the six and nine issue. But barring that, you really haven't seen any rollback despite perceived opposition from within its coalition partners and so, so on. So when you did the math as an economist, you said, listen, he's talking about revenue rising by 16%. Uh, you know, some amount of, you know, plan expenditure, he's kept it within limits. Yeah. I think he can do the job. Is, is that the I, I, I would think tax collection growth has been put very realistically achievable. Hmm. As I said earlier on, that what we really would like to see is on the other non-tax revenue aspect, 
which is the disinvestment and also the telecom spectrum. So let, let me flip this question to the other side. For you as investors and analysts here in Dubai running exchanges, do you believe and how important is this fiscal deficit figure of 4.8%? Do you believe that this is something that the market believes and investors believe can be adhered to? Correct. The fact that the market tanked on the day uh, the budget was being announced uh, and it has not been doing very well over the last few days shows that the market really was not, uh, is, um, didn't react very well to, to, to his assurances, number one. Number two, I think uh, the more important point is in, in terms of uh, uh, the figure 4.8, uh, well, he has uh, managed to squeeze, you know, fr uh, from 5.5, 5.7 .5, to 5.2, that shows, but still the market was expecting something more in terms of assurances, um, whether it was, uh, one issue was, of course, um, the TRC. And, right. And, and so, so, so basically, you're going back to the big picture. You felt he wasn't was, able to yeah, deliver. For, 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 uh, 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 foreign investors, there were some issues, we can go into the specifics later on, right. but there were some issues like the tax residency certificate was one issue, um, which, which actually uh, led to the market going down, that was one issue. Right. Now, uh, the other one, of course, is the market sentiment, to improve market sentiment, you have to have some concrete measures uh, to boost the market. There was right. nothing concrete in the... In, in As somebody of said, there's nothing in the stock, at least for the equity markets in the There was budget. nothing there, yeah, that's, oh, that's okay. what I felt. But, but then, of course, one can counter that argument, but I'll come to that a little uh, later on. Gaurav, what is your reaction to the kind of measures that he's taken? He's actually allowed physically people like, like you and me to actually bring in more amounts of gold into the country. He's not hiked the import duty. He's hiked the uh, commodities transaction tax. Put it together for me as an investor in gold, and what does it really do uh, to that commodity? I think the single biggest uh, uh, announcement is the introduction of CTT. Uh, you can see in the stock price of MCX, which has tanked 10% since this budget speech, and also the volumes which have gone down by 20% in the last, last couple of sessions. I mean, for a normal hedger, normal investor, which used to pay about 160 rupees, they will have to shell out 1,160 rupees for the same transaction. So that is a kind of uh, additional burden on this, right. which has uh, very interesting implications worldwide, especially for the, this region where uh, in, Dubai has been city of gold and it has been gateway to India in terms of gold. Uh, I think it is some of other uh, people have already mentioned that alternative channels, the illegal channels used to be flying from so here. So you think this will just push it to the illegal channel instead of Not the necessarily, channel? but uh, it, could, it could affect the liquidity on Indian exchanges in the markets. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, comment in the budget speech where uh, before Chidambaram uh, reduced the STT, it says that taking note of changes and shifts in the market, I propose to reduce uh, STT from 1.7 basis point to 1 basis point. So that clearly shows in 2008 onwards since the STT was almost fully enforced because four years before under Equity section, markets went... So equity markets have been stagnant. Commodity right. market has grown by 3.5 times. Right. And now they have introduced one basis point on that commodities. And at the same time they have left currency market untouched which is 10 times bigger than the commodities. So all in all, it's good for us here in Middle East for the DGCX, which is the largest exchange in the because Middle East. a lot East. of the volume of trade will shift to you. We, we would expect that. I mean, uh, INR contract, which has been our biggest contract, uh, INR futures, we were the pioneers. Right. We, we virtually forced government of India to think about this segment and open up this segment. And today, India does about, on a good day, $9 billion worth of uh, currency futures whereas we do about $3 billion. But uh, Pramod, let me bring you in here because you also handle uh, and you also look at this aspect of the market. Uh, how, how do you see this impact? Because he, there is a certain thinking. He's not said that, listen, I'm going to introduce some huge import duty on gold, restrict this market, kill it completely, or rather attempt to do that. Um, what's yep. your reaction? See, though there has been an increase in the duty-free imports uh, for male and female from 10,000, 20,000 to 50,001 lakh. From a remittance industry perspective, what we see is that 
the current regime of controlling on the customs duty uh, may still drive movement to alternative channels. Just to give some heads up on numbers, for example, as on Monday, the six percentage price arbitrage between uh, Dubai and Bombay on gold, specifically 152 per gram is the price arbitrage between Dubai and uh, Bombay. Hmm. We know that uh, till late 90s, when there was no allowment of, Dubai, of the gold imports, there used to be a big difference in the rates offered by way of formal remittances and informal remittance. Right. We need to bring in the context. Last year, India received $70 billion, which is 20 percentage more than the last 2011, which is a very important aspect when the country was struggling for the capital inflows. Hmm. So uh, we need to put into context how it will uh, drive of the informal remittances thriving. We are not very sure about that, but we are skeptical whether the informal remittance may still come in, though the remittance still flow, but not in the formal way. Okay, so you are saying basically a lot of it will move to the black market. That Maybe. Is a Paramita, if I could add, uh, India has a very natural and cultural appetite for gold. I think it's going to be difficult to contain the demand for gold. Uh, what really would happen is the 20% composition of investment demand for gold may probably get pruned, but what about the rest of the 80% of demand? It still remains intact. Intact in the sense, culturally we are so close to gold, I'm bearing testimony to that. But more importantly, I think it's, it's when you know that a condition is given, when a situation is given, how do you convert that so-called unproductive asset into a productive asset? Hmm. So I think the current thinking back home in India is how do I monetize this physical saving of gold by creating some monetary transactional kind of uh, feature to it right. and you know make because the whole asset not, productive. Because the whole challenge is if he's not able to not able to control this, we go back to a huge current account Absolutely. deficit, we go back to the issue of the fiscal deficit and we are back yep. to the starting Precisely. point. So this was a nutshell. Did this budget with his measures, has he been able to do enough in India? But the question is, after this budget, now uh, the sense I want to get is, is there a case for me as an investor sitting here in Dubai to actually go ahead and park greater funds. Do I A, have more instruments available at my disposal? B, am I likely to get better returns? Shubhana, let me start with you. I'll start with my home bank. <laughs> uh, we offer 7% interest rate on the savings account. Back home we call it savings account. I think in the region you call it no frill account. Savings is no frill. That's not what we mean. Uh, it's 7% interest rate. If you allow that taxable income of 10,000 you know, uh, um, on interest, on savings, it tantamounts to saying about 9.5% interest on your savings account. I think which part of the world, tell me now, given the current interest rate scenario, gives you those kind of returns? Important issue is implementation. The roadmap has been laid on, but implementation and execution of those policies, which can generate more confidence. Uh, the investor doesn't have confidence in India at this stage. So he's taken some steps. I I'm glad you brought that up. For instance, you know, uh, simplif simplification in the procedures as far as KYC norms are concerned. He's mentioned a number of measures, making it easier for FIIs and if you want to set up, uh, you know, participatory notes. Yeah. Mr. Agarwal, yeah, you yeah. would know that. I, th I think the single biggest message which FM has given is India is open for business. Hmm. Yeah. India welcomes FDI. India welcomes foreign investment. And India will do necessary steps, starting with all those small measures, to roll out a red carpet for the investors. I so think it's a matter of time, what, mm. he, what measures he has announced. Once people see those getting implemented, probably uh, the Q2, F, uh, FY14, or maybe early 15, when people, these things are being seen as implemented, more confidence and more better. So if not FY14, beginning and we'll do well. Right, um, because is there, you know, he has made a case, okay, now we've discussed fund flows, we've discussed coal. The other thing, the other big issue is in terms of our manufacturing sector, which has been slipping, and in this budget, he's announced a lot of SOPs for you if you want to set up companies uh, in India. For instance, investments of over 100 crores will allow you a 15% uh, um, rebate uh, in terms of uh, deductions on those investments. So. Lot of SOPs for SMEs as well, but 
yet we haven't seen that kind of demand coming in. Two, he's announced a lot of these measures in the budget. But this is a government which has been trying to set out a, you know, a big story about trying to get investors to come in and set up shop in India. What's the biggest reason why they don't do it? Lack of confidence again. I think it's, it's just somebody has to make a big thing. Like Abu Dhabi Sovereign Fund is, is, has promised uh, Commerce Minister Mr. Anand Sharma a, a big investment in India. Once a couple of such things happen, there will be a B string because India is the place to invest. I don't think there's any the choice for the investor globally. Is the investor ready to trust India? After this budget, how many of you are ready to invest more in India? As an NRI, Crusader since last 65 years in this part of the world. What I am trying to tell is the government is very sincere, but the facilities, the laws, the rules and regulations which are issued by uh, Delhi, sometimes it doesn't reach to the provinces, to the state. If it reach, they don't read it. If they read it, they don't implement it. So we have a lot of problems in the investment because of the either the lack of uh, cooperation and even the scheme like a gold scheme, I mean gold means good scheme, right. afterwards the uh, bureaucrats make if and but, yes and no, subject to, unsubject to, under the circumstances, all the I, I, I get your point, sir. Investors on this side are saying that we just don't know if we should believe what the FM is saying, uh, whether or not he will walk the talk. There will be a new government coming in place, but there are uh, my, uh, you know, uh, economists and uh, you have Mr. Agarwal here who is telling you that no, listen, he is trying to change the rules of the game and it will get easier for you. Now, the proof of the pudding lies in the eating. Now, India is also talking about holding IPOs of some of its public sector banks, uh, public sector companies. You know, that is the family silver. And we've seen the kind of returns that those IPOs are likely to generate. The government is betting big. Is there a case for you as investors, you're sitting on huge amount of funds, you're thinking of where can I get those returns, for them to actually go ahead and invest in some of these primary issues which are likely to come out. Mr. Agarwal, do you think there is enough sentiment which is building up for some of these IPOs to go through successfully, especially of the public sector units that the FM is talking about? Yeah, definitely. Uh, recent, uh, in past also, all uh, IPO, all open for sale, uh, issued by the PSUs is quite successful. And uh, uh, though uh, sentiments are positive, still you see, uh, in 1980, if you see the entire broader picture, in 1980, census was 100. Today, it is around 18,900, 189 times in 32 years, giving uh, a compounded return of more than 15 percent per annum. So growth is very much there in India uh, and uh, equity classes is giving much better return than all other asset classes. Uh, so you can calculate even if you invested in uh, in 1980 100 rupees in share market it is now 18,900 simply in, uh, indexed I am telling it to you. Right. Okay. You can always do it much better. So uh, there is a very positive perception in India and uh, worldwide global recession was there and uh, still India is making good progress. GDP is still 5%, it's not bad and uh, they will definitely achieve 8%. So time to come, uh, India will back in their growth. Okay, final questions. After this budget and after this has been announced, you've been through the prime pit. Mr. Bangat. What are you advising your clients in terms of their investment in India? Are you asking them to increase their investments and if so, in which asset classes? See, if you look at from a remittance perspective, the 60 percentage of the flow or the money that goes in gets into the household expenditure. The 20 percentage gets into the bank deposits and the 10 percentage gets into investments in real estates or equity markets and those kind of things. And as Subhuta was mentioning, uh, after the deregulation of the interest rates on NR deposits, uh, bank deposits have been a very, uh, very important uh, so source. So that thing you are uh, saying is likely to stay. It will increase. It will increase because two, three reasons. If you read between lines in the budget, there has been some announcements for the uh, a woman bank, all woman bank. This is something right. which is very interesting from a metal perspective because most of the beneficiaries who receive money are largely women, hmm. because those are the bachelors out here. And you see, uh, there is an announcement of putting up ATMs in all public sector bank branches. 
these things will increase the uh, number of people into the banking net and right. we will see that increased amount of remittances getting into the banks okay. and which we have already seen since the deregulation of the interest rates happened. Okay, okay. So basically you, you feel that there is a lot which is interesting in the budget. Very quickly, Gaurav, and you know this as uh, a news editor, keep it crisp, keep, keep it short. What's the message that you got out of the budget? It was a good budget in terms of uh, the constraints under which he, he had to present the budget. But, but much of it is riding on especially the revenue generation on two things. One is, of course, the so, sale so of... So do you believe him? Sale of PSU stakes and the telecom, yeah. that, those two. I, I'm not too sure on that count. You're, you're I mean, in between. I'm kind 50, of, 50. Much, much assumptions have been made to be... No, from, from DGCX perspective, we are going to expand on the India story which we have had. Hmm. We are going to very soon launch uh, S&P, BAC, Sensex on the, the Dubai. Uh, we, are, we have already announced plans to launch our flanking products for INR futures, that is mini INR. So we are definitely going to uh, enhance our story. I couldn't agree more uh, with Bharat Bhai saying if it is difficult to do business in India, then we will bring India to the doorstep of UAE. Okay. Mr. Bhutani? I think I agree. Uh, uh, it's, it's a matter of time. India is coming up and it will come up and um, what FM has set as targets are all achievable in 4.8. India is the third fastest growing economy as per World Bank, Bank estimates and following uh, China and Indonesia I think and World Bank says that India will overtake Indonesia so, next so, year. So you are so, also a believer in this story. Okay. Ms. Agarwal, we've just heard from you. Shubhada, final words from you. Uh, you held restraint, showed patience over the last couple of years, show it for one more year, India is at the point of inflection. It is turning around for better. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, my panelists, for joining us. <laughs> and now we're going to discuss something I know all of you uh, would love to discuss. Uh, we'll ask the next round of uh, panelists to join us on board, and that's going to be on the taxes front. You are aware we are the youngest commercial bank in India, eight years old. Uh, we do not yet have an international presence, but that does not mean that we do not allow others to participate in our growth story. And that's exactly what we plan to do. We appreciate the role of Indian diaspora in uh, India's growth story. And keeping that in mind, I think we have, uh, what we've done is we've devised the savings products at the outset, which through virtual banking, through a phone, since we do not have a branch, through phone or internet, we would allow the Indian non-residents to basically, uh, you know, avail of much higher return of interest as compared to the others and actually have a cushion against inflation. We are very keen to uh, raise our forays into other avenues. Uh, we await the central bank approvals, necessary approvals, to start our branch or rep office, whatever format it comes into. But needless to say that it would not just then be uh, restricted to retail banking, but even the corporate banking products could be devised by us through our uh, you know, offices in the region whenever we get a go-ahead signal from the Reserve Bank of India. This is a good provision which has, he has brought in and let us appreciate. I mean the finance minister is, a very, is taking very general steps and let all NRI community, they should back him by uh, you know, those people who believe that rupee is going to appreciate, they must subscribe to these bonds. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC, MoneyWise, BeWise.
trade precious metals, currencies and energy futures in the first and largest derivatives exchange in the region. Trade the unique Indian rupee futures contract and hedge your price risk. Trade gold futures on a regulated and secure platform. Regulated by Securities and Commodities Authority in the UAE. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Liquid markets and tight spreads. Superior transaction speed. Wider range of trading and clearing services. Emerging market access for the global market. Global market access for regional investors. DGCX. Right time, right place. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. Before you realize, your loved ones will grow. What about your money? For incredible investment opportunities, talk to SMC. Money wise, be wise. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today. My next round of panelists to please join us on stage, Mr. Dr. Ram Baksani, Mr. K. V. Ramamurthy, Mr. Sam Samir Kanabar, Mr. D. K. Agarwal, Mr. Setu Raman and Dr. Narayanan T. Ramachandranas. Mr. Chidambaram has said that I am trying to give you certainty as far as the tax regime is concerned. The DTC is also uh, in abeyance at this point but he's clearly indicated that they are moving forward on that front. So there is some sort of stability, he, the message he's trying to send out is, listen, we are trying to change that aspect. Um, Mr. Kanabar and uh, Mr. Setram, um, Mr. Kanabar, actually, let me come to you. Do you believe that investors should start reorienting themselves and believing in the long-term structure in terms of some of these uh, taxes which have been imposed? So, I mean, and, and as you rightly said, the two big ticket things uh, which he is banking on is direct tax code and GST. And what tactfully he has done is that the previous finance minister was promoting GST by dictatorship. He was saying that we will draft GST, let states accept it. What he has done, he has turned the table around. He is saying that US states draft something give it to me, if I feel okay, I'll sign off, let's proceed. So he has now started getting buy-in in of each state because to get GST you need three-fourths of the majority voting to mm -hmm. get a constitutional amendment. So he has turned the table around, he is telling, yes you draft, he has put his people in the team, he has formed a committee, his people are sitting there, Sushil Modi, etc. They are driving it and I am hopeful that once this happens, I think it will be a really big door opener for investments coming to India. Same thing is happening on direct tax code. He has clearly announced in this budget session direct tax code is coming in and he said it will not be the same as you are seeing the way it is drafted. It will be a totally different new tax code. He doesn't want the existing code just to be renamed as direct tax code. He wants something new. Because, uh, Mr. Baksani, let me come to you. Last year when we were talking, the biggest issue was GAR. GAR in this budget, he's saying 2016 is the timeline. TRC, oops, I didn't read what I was, I wasn't able to, uh, you know, I made a mistake there. He quickly retracted uh, the TRC uh, uh, being, you know, uh, uh, being enough of a clause for overseas ref, uh, investors to come in. Um, what does that do for an investor like yourself? When you have a guard which happened in the previous budget, a quick retraction on the TRC. Um, this is exactly NRS are looking for. I mean, there has to be some consistency. Now, in the present budget, there's not even a single mention of NRS. As if for the country, they don't exist. Uh, and what they have mentioned that finance minister has created an instrument to invest in rupee-denominated bonds. Now, 
Okay, as uh, Mr. Ramamurthy said, this is a very safe investment. There is no doubt about it. But in last two years we have seen rupee has depreciated by about 20 percent. Now you pay 9.5 percent per, per year and lose 10 percent by way of depreciation. What sort of investment is that? Mr. Ramal, would you like to counter that? Yes. See, uh, there was a provision where the, in last uh, budget the finance minister at that time he had given a 5 percent taxation uh, rate on the dollar denominated infrastructure bonds. So uh, he had only extended this benefit to a rupee denominated bond because some people even here in the audience they might be having a feeling that Indian rupee is going to appreciate and if that is the case I think it makes a good case people who believe that Indian rupee is going to appreciate and if they have a taxation rate of only 5 percent why not to put money into a, dollar, a rupee denominated bond. So the dollar it's, denominated option is still there. It's still there. And that has not been taken away. So what I say this is a good provision which has, he has brought in and let us appreciate I mean the finance minister is a very is taking very genuine steps and let all NRI community they should back him by uh, you know those people who believe that rupee is going to appreciate they must subscribe to these bonds. So Agarwal has just clarified hmm. that you know dollar denominated option is there hmm. but the rupee denominated he's added on. Hmm. So then you as an investor have both options. And Pravita right? I would also like to add one more, one and then more, this is my uh, personal observation. I believe that Indian rupee, which is trading at 55 as of now, will meet in the next budget also. My sense is the way this finance minister is creating a very conducive atmosphere for attracting foreign money, lot of FII money, lot of FDI money, lot of NRI money is going to come to India, and Indian markets are going to do very well, and rupee is going to appreciate maybe to the level of 48. Maybe to the level of 48. Right. So that, because that could have impacted us even further, including the currency, if that had not happened. Yes. One point which budget provisions contain is that inflation adjusted bonds are announced yes, impact. Yes, right. I think that's a good bet for any investor, whether it is a domestic investor or an NRI investor, when your investment is going to be guarded against the inflation and especially rate of interest. Again, I am telling you, the moment in inflation comes down, I think interest rates are bound to come down. In fact. Absolutely. I think absolutely. we need to be on the watch out and there are good number of options available for even NRIs where they can hedge in fact. I think that uh, depreciation which is being really, if they can afford to hedge that risk in fact, we still they can make substantial money on right. it. Mr. Kanabad, uh, let me come to you. How do I now as an investor prepare for guard uh, given the fact that it's going to be happening in 2016 um, and given the fact that many NRIs are setting up offshore and have set up offshore units. So. How do I prepare? How do I react given this timeline? And also on the issue of TRC, which many NRIs have asked, in fact, for some sort of leniency, and uh, you know there was expectation that he would actually make it easier for NRIs. So let's break up the question in two parts. One is, of course, the TRC part will come to it separately. But the most important is uh, anti-avoidance rules, and. Indian revenue authorities are, are really agitated the way some of the treaties which India has signed, especially India Mauritius, through where the entire funds are being channeled. So what Trick tactfully he has done is two measures. One is that he has introduced a buyback distribution tax, which net net means that if Indian company were to pay dividend to a Mauritius company, it would pay it in the form of buyback of shares. So it will buy back the shares and distribute the surplus, which would not suffer any tax in India. Second, what he has done is that he came out with this aspect of uh, ghost in the name of TRC. And as one of the panel member earlier said, the market tanked. One, one single reason for market tanking was TRC. And he had to do a quick act to call a quick press conference and then convey the message that the intention was not to do away the Mauritius Treaty, we will respect the Mauritius Treaty. However, there are certain sources of income which could be in the name of royalty, fees for technical services, etc., where we want to test that whether a beneficial owner is indeed a beneficial owner and hence availing low, lower tax rate or not. So basically the message coming out is as NRI investors, 
eventually I will have to start paying more tax whether it is on my equity investments because I would be an overseas investor and if I am going to be uh, once DTC comes into effect please be prepared and it is only an equitable arrangement uh, that given the fact that domestic investors are also taxed. Yeah, and he has given you two years for that. He has given you, you two years to adjust yeah. to that. So yeah. I, I, I think that is a fair road map that he's given. Okay, very quickly, very quickly because we're completely running out of time and I know everyone's stomach is grumbling but real estate, we know it's an important conduit for investment. He's done a lot for the medium and sub, uh, you know, for uh, the lower category of uh, investments. Um, now, as far as real estate is concerned, um, let me start with you um, and Mr. Baksani. The thing is that he's also introduced a TDS on all transactions above 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs. Again, so he is bringing more and more transactions under the tax net. But he's also giving you SOPs for middle to low income level home loans that you have taken. So um, how does that change the profile for NRI investors? What's the sense among the well, members? I think what he has done is very, very fair. Mm -hmm. Just 1% TDS on amount uh, above 50 lakhs is quite reasonable. Right. Kanabha, do you yeah. agree? No, uh, I, I would put it a bit differently. And, and all of us noticed that he made a very clear statement, only 42,800 above 1 crore taxpayers. I mean, by any means, it is, it is not a number. The, the, the difference in India is that maybe, yes, people are not earning income, but people have accumulated wealth in whatever form and shape. So, what he's trying to do is tax wealth under the Income Tax Act by introducing but this 1%. But it makes percent. my procedure more cumbersome because... Yeah, I, I mean, but uh, ultimately you have to see that what nation deserves, is it getting and whether the pain or administrative hurdle is a larger concern. And, and I think if as a nation, if we are only admitting that we have only 42,800 above 1 crore taxpayers is, is something which is absurd, which cannot be accepted and hence this kind of tax is legitimate from an economic and from a nation perspective. Okay. I'm going to bring in uh, uh, my uh, guest who's representing Amity today. Health and education as an outlay has received greater outlays, which it does every budget. But how does that translate for an investor? Um, whether it's for you, who is, uh, where you're per pursuing private education within the country or outside. Was there anything specifically in the budget and for entrepreneurs who are looking to enter this field? As far as uh, our Amity Education Group is concerned, it is a not-for-profit uh, education sector. So in, in so far as the budget perspective from a non-profit higher education group is concerned, we see that a substantial investment is made, one, in vocational training, two, SOPs for uh, institutions that offer vocational training, three is a substantial investment in the area of uh, elementary education through Sarva Siksha, Abhiman, and also to support the children midday meal schemes. Right. Now what happens is these children now will grow up and get into the higher education sector. The gap there is now we need to see some more funding such that these children will get into the higher education sector. So that's sector. where private sector needs to come in? Yes. A, a kind of partnership or incentives for institutions such as us right. which are non-profit in character will, will require. Which it, it may be in terms of infrastructure support, it may be in terms of subsidies, it may be in terms of uh, parking certain education cess into non-profit higher education sector. And also there is a lot of uh, 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 regional interest within India. We have been having visitors in Dubai from different governments, state governments in India, uh, trying to replicate the models that are there in the UAE to uh, strengthen the education system based on earlier knowledge commission reports in terms of lack of universities, the number of universities considering the number of turnaround right. of students and so on. Okay. So we see that there is tremendous opportunities in terms of investments in higher education sector in India. Okay, the discussion has been around uh, 
you know, the nitty gritties in the budget and I think we've uh, brought up some of the important points. We'd like to conclude the discussion at this point. Perhaps, uh, you know, there's still many areas we haven't covered, but a forum like this cannot always cover many areas. We've tried to go in as in-depth as possible, but really to give you the message and I think we are hearing two different messages that, you know, there is one, at one level there is the perception, at the other level there is the details that one should go into to really understand what the finance minister is trying to do and hopefully next year this time when we address you again uh, we will see an Indian economy which is back on a much firmer footing and some of those investments that you've planned in India actually deliver better than expected returns if we uh, were to go by what some of our panelists are telling us. With that, thank you so much for joining us again this year and we'll meet you again next year. Good night. India's fourth largest private sector bank providing superior interest rates and the finest banking experience for NRIs. Your support inspires us to do better. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Contact Yes Bank today.